What's going on, YouTube? It's your boy, Cam ATL, and welcome back to another MLB High Five video with your boy. I know I haven't had a video the last couple uh, days because we've had early slates, and when we have early slates, I have to lock into the early slate in the morning, and I'm not, I don't have time to do the videos. But today, we don't have an early slate. We got a main slate. We've got some, like, stuff. Stupid pricing that DraftKings hit us with here, um, and we're going to talk about it, which is kind of annoying. I wish things weren't that easy, uh, because then ownership's just going to be ridiculous on some of these plays, but um, either way, we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about ways that we could possibly get different, and uh, you know, get her done. Greenlightdfs.com, join the squad. We've got six prize picks posted on the MLB Access page. Let's get right over there. Uh, we've had a couple down days after a huge couple months, like, I mean... It's been crazy. Uh, DFS ready for a big night here. It's Friday going into the weekend, so let's get it. So starting off at pitching, um, like I said, there's some stupid pricing on this slate. There has been no struggle at all to get two of my favorite pitchers and then not worry about it. Shane McClanahan and Blake Snell are by far my two favorite pitchers on the slate. We've got some talented guys on this slate. Right, we've got Nola, we've got Sandoval, we've got Singer, who's been solid. Gausman, all these guys are solid options. All of these guys are solid pitchers in general, so solid talent guys. But not only is Shane McClanahan and Snell kind of two of the top tier talent guys on this slate, but they have two of the most top tier matchups as well. Kansas City's been striking out a ton versus lefties. Washington's been struggling without Soto at first they were doing pretty well not striking out too much some solid plate discipline but now I mean versus lefties especially and against a guy like Blake Snell it's going to be a struggle for them here today as well so I think Blake Snell's also going to have a huge game I wouldn't be surprised to see 9 10ks out of Blake Snell um, same out of McClanahan so it could be huge games out of these two guys and then really take down potential here with these two guys having the upside they have and then if you get the rest of these plays right now let's talk about the value plays on this slate two of my favorite values in course now there's so much value and it's annoying as you can see my top projected guy on the slate is Brandon Bell and he's 2-8 that is annoying. I'm not sure why they would price these guys this cheap against a bad pitcher in cores. It makes n absolutely no sense. They're trying to push the masses on one way, obviously, I could tell. Um, Brandon Bell is a fantastic option at 2-8. Um, going into course, lefty righty matchup against Urena. I, I just I, I love this spot. I mean, it's just pretty obvious. They made it so damn obvious on how to how to play this late today. All right, next guy that I'm gonna go with is going to be Wade. Lamonte Wade Jr. has been on an absolute tear on this San Francisco squad. He's been the best one versus righties on the road and just in general. He's got over a 400 ISO over the last like 20 plate appearances or 25 plate appearances. It's been ridiculous versus righties. Okay, this dude's got tremendous power. He's going into a power-friendly park against a bad pitcher who can't strike guys out. Lamonte Wade Jr. is just one of my favorite plays as well. I mean, Lamonte, Brandon Belt, you got Yastrzemski, you've got Brandon Crawford, you've got all these dudes. Ridiculous price in cores. It just pisses me off how obvious that is. Um, and I mean, in the high five, I have no choice but to put these guys in because these guys, I mean, are obvious core plays. Um, last but not least, to get a little lower owned, hopefully, Manny Machado in San Diego. Now, a lot of people might jump to like the Juan Soto lefty righty, which I love Juan Soto too, don't get me wrong. I like that matchup for sure. Now when you break it down and you look at Espino, right? Espino has struggled versus righty power. All right, against lefties, he's not good, but he hasn't been as bad as he's been versus righty power. He's really struggled versus righty power. Manny Machado here in this matchup could really shine. He's been solid as of late. He's been really seeing the ball well. Now he's facing a pitcher, like I said, who gives, gives it up to righty power. This is a spend-up spot that a lot of people might sleep on and might not play. A lot of people might, instead of going Manny, might go Juan Soto or whatever. And if Manny ends up getting a couple home runs or even a home run and Soto doesn't, I mean, it could put you above the rest immediately. So I really like Manny Machado here. I like the righty power of San Diego a lot. Brandon Drury could have a big game as well with Espino struggles versus righty power. So I really, really like this spot there for him as well. And that's it, man. I mean, so far it's been, it's pretty solid. Obviously, if you want to get lower owned, it would be getting off San Francisco. Um, Wade always tends to be low owned, but in cores, he probably won't be. Brandon Belt's going to be mega chalk. If you want to get different automatically, you can get off Brandon Belt and spend up for a, uh, a spend up first baseman um, like a Shohei Otani. 
like a Goldschmidt versus lefty uh, versus a lefty like CJ Cron righty lefty in course. Any of these options are fine options. Uh, that if you want to be different, um, they're fine options. Um, so I really like those spots, but yeah, I mean, it, it, DraftKings made it pretty obvious on the slate. It's about finding difference other places. Don't feel like you have to get off a belt or off a of Lamonte Wade or off of your, your Stramski or Crawford or all these guys who are in such fantastic spots. You don't have to force yourself to get off these spots. Just get different on the spots where you can. All right. Even that one player that's different in your lineup can end up putting you at the top of the list, you know, whereas fading these San Francisco guys takes major balls, and I would only recommend you do that if you're playing multiple lineups. All right, Sharks are going to be out there. These so-called pros who call themselves pros and Max Center every night, um, they're going to have lineups where they fade San Francisco and Colorado or whatever. I mean, because they're just playing the number game. Um, if you're playing cash games, like I re- require, like I um, recommend the regular player just trying to consistently make money single entry cash games is the way to go and if you're making one two lineups then play it play it the way you should play it where where the numbers point you and that's playing the san francisco guys um and get different one or two spots um if those guys do end up being super chalk which obviously i expect them to be um other low owned spots nobody's going to be on the yankees today aaron judge has amazing history versus gausman um I like Gausman as a pitcher today. He's been really good on the road. New York's been striking out a good bit at home and just period versus righties lately. They've been struggling a little bit. Um, but Aaron Judge has fantastic history versus Gausman. I believe three home runs, nine of 20, something like that. So like a 400 average, three home runs. He's been hitting them pretty well. He'll be low owned. This is a big bang guy that could get you a home run that you know, nobody will probably be on because that Vegas total is 4-1, something like that, 4.1 run total. Um, so makes sense why, because Gausman's so good, but, um, Gausman can give up power at times, and Aaron Judge is definitely a power guy. Um, Mike Trout might be lower owned, he's just coming back from injury, he's only 5'6", so it makes sense to go that route. Otani, I do like these guys from LA, I think Manning's been okay, he hasn't been blown up too hard, but, uh... Otani and Trout are fantastic options, obviously. And Trout coming back from, I mean, he might shine or he might struggle uh, to start out. Who knows? But um, solid spot. Um, the Dodgers are projected pretty high from Vegas. I don't necessarily understand it completely because Lazardo is an ace, plain and simple. Uh, he can struggle at times, sure, just like every pitcher in the league. But Lazardo is a fantastic pitcher. Um, so, but if you believe where Vegas is coming from, I don't think. Dodgers are going to have a ton of ownership. So guys like a Mookie Betts, righty-lefty matchup, um, another guy who hits lefties really, really well is going to be uh, – what's his name? Uh, catcher for – damn, I'm brain farting on his name real quick. Hold on, let me see. Uh, Will Smith. Will Smith, a catcher uh, facing a lefty. Obviously, he's fine. Adley Rutschman's been mashing. Um, he's got the wind blowing out to left. Um, against Crawford, which is a solid matchup for him. You've got Kirk in a righty matchup against Tyon. Toronto's another stack that's pretty well. They hit with a lot of power versus right-handed pitching. All that stuff, man. We just got solid options on this slate, but one sticks out more than any other, like a sore thumb on this slate with the pricing, and that's San Francisco guys. So get your San Francisco guys right. If you can, if you have an idea where the ownership's going to be, if you can maybe get different somewhere, like let's say for some reason Lamonte Wade's not going to have ownership. Fucking lock his ass in. You know what I mean? Like, lock those play- plays in that are in great spots that might not possibly carry a ton of ownership, if you can. But these guys are probably going to, I don't know. that. Yeah, whatever. Uh, GreenlightDFS.com. Join the squad. Good luck, everybody. Let's smash today going into the weekend. And I'm out. Peace.